Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers and in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at that Mountfield lawnmower that I've resprayed um, uh, from new, uh, pretty much uh, took it all back to bare metal as you've seen in part one and part two, uh, resprayed it, it's good to go now, just got to put it all back together so I'll bring the lawnmower back up to a, to a top uh, where there's some good lighting and uh, we'll make a start and put this lawnmower back together and hopefully by the end of the video we'll have it all up together running and looking like a million dollars, so that'd be fantastic. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's put this lawnmower back together. Okay, so first off, all I wanna do is just um, get the front axle screwed in. I've literally just laid the axle inside here now, that's all I've done, just laid it in, uh, it's in the right area and there's a height adjustment to go down the side which I put a bit of rag around just to protect the body. So all I'm going to do is there's four holes, one, two, three, four, and just put a 10 mil bolt um, with a Torx bit through, get them tightened up and I'll come back. It'd be a bit of a slow process so I'm just going to show you what I'm doing and uh, move on, get them tightened up otherwise we're going to be here all day sort of thing. So yep, simply four of these, um, wind them into the four holes and so I line up and that'll hold the axle in place. And if you remember, the side that didn't have the height adjustment on it had this little tiny plate on it, which sits behind and it just stops this um, height adjustment arm going any further than what it needs to. So I mustn't forget to put that one in. And I think it simply just sits in there like so, without scratching the paintwork. From what I remember, it just sits in there like that. And it just stops that um, that height adjustment coming back any further. So I'll get that fit into place now, and I'll come back to you. Okay, front axle's now on. Um, I've got to just to adjust this little clip at the back here once I know where the height adjustment goes. So I thought I'd put the wheels on next, just so it give me a bit of height, so I know exactly what's going on. Don't know what they were on there. I think they're about 12 or 13. As you see, uh, this height adjustment, I've uh, wrapped that up in a rag because that's going to be the thing that's going to smash, your, smash your body. So that's been protected. And the wheel can go on. should be on that way and it'll just sort of give me a bit of a, a guide to where the height adjustment needs to be so I'll put that wheel on uh, put the other side on do them up and I'll come back to you right front wheels are now on and so the height adjustment is not hooked up yet but when I put the spring on um, and it goes on to a back assembly that should take up the height adjustment where it needs to be um, so I'm going to turn, turn it around now and start to get the work on the back side of it. Try and get the rear roller in and what have you. So let me just get my tools ready and I'll come back just before I fit it. Okay, next to go on will be this uh, rear assembly flap, um, which goes on here. This bolt here, I believe goes, uh, I think it goes through there. And then you've got one, two, three, um, if you one, two, three, and that little tiny flap just there sits inside that little tiny recess just there. So I'll get them all fitted on, um, find the bolts, and then we'll bolt it all up together. Okay, so just loosely fitted that on now, and I've got these three big bolts, or good size, and they're gonna go, I've got about six, to, six or eight to do. Gonna go through the body, like so, and then bolt up either side. So I've got six to do, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll get them done right now, and I'll come back to you. Okay, top bracket's now on. Um, those little bolts didn't go where I thought they did. They go on here and they actually hold the um, the height adjustment on, on the arm, sorry, so I need to put them back in before I lose them. I've already lost one bolt as it is by the looks of it. Hopefully I haven't, there it is. So they can go back in, they actually hold the handles on. So let me just fish them back in there quickly because uh, I shall no doubt lose them a bit later on. I don't want to be losing no bits. And 
it's a bit of a struggle as it is trying to remember where it all went. Uh, it's been about what three weeks since I've uh, been back on this mower. So that's those in, and the flap now works as it should do, which is good. Um, Bees will be cleaned up anyway, and I might just try and mask up and just spray up. It's a bit backwards, but uh, once I want to see what it looks like with the fairings on first. Um, so that's that done. I think next is going to be the back roller assembly, which is down hither. That's got all the bits on it still. Um, that's got two bolts to the other side to hold this height adjustment bracket to in its place. And then the, the whole bracketry should go on and there's a plastic bit missing, which goes, here it is, which goes onto, onto here. That goes onto there and goes on the other side. And then there's, there's this piece here, which goes inside the shaft, the other side as well. So let me get that fitted on and I'll come back to you. I'll, uh, if I find anything that's a bit, bit um, niggly, I'll let you know. But uh, looking at that piece there, that piece sits in just like so and just just self-contained because it'll sit on on the roller itself so that'll be easy enough let me get that done and i'll come back right next is going to be to fit these in uh, which are little tiny locating lugs and they have a little tiny screw which goes through them and they sit in just like so and then these screws go in so i'm gonna fit them first i think those screws are a little bit too big actually if you're a bit careful what i'm winding in You get a Torx bit to fit those. Well, with these fitted, this will make it a bit easier to locate the axle. I knew that'd happen. I want to try and get you guys to see as much as possible. That's the thing. So let me just try and fit one of these in. I've got four of these to do. Oh, sorry, four screws. And that will help fit the axle in place. And it's better to put them on now than it is later on when the uh, when the axle's already on it because you won't get you won't get the uh, you won't get the clearance. So I've got the other side done, get that screwed on. And go on to there and then that once they're in place that, that'll help form the, the, the guidelines for the axle right they're now in place so i think i can now make a start to put the the rear roller in i need a there should be a little piece here yeah this piece i think that goes in there like so and then without scratching too much paintwork that will then lay in there and in there. It won't spin yet because it needs to have the, uh, the tensioner put on it. You've got this arm here to put in place, which I should have put in place initially. Let me take it back out. Let me just rotate this thing around here. That's it. That's going to sit better in there. And I've got a couple of bolts to fit onto that one and that'll hold the uh, you're not seeing that uh, down here it's a plate here height adjustment plate there's two holes there and that's got to have bolts to go in there yet which should be there and there let me get them in and that'll hold that down I need to get the two pins that hold down the axles which would be these little kiddies and they just sit on top like so, I'm going to grease them up before I do anything because that'll help to uh, to rotate the axle. So they'll be greased, um, about holding them into place. And I've got bolts to go through here yet as well, which will hold the actual axle to it, which would be the slightly bigger shoulder bolts. These two, so they go through as well. They'll hold them on in place. So I'm going to get a bit of grease. Do these four, put the big bolts in, and these two bolts here, and then I'll come back to you. Right, just nicking these ones up. I'm using my old snap-on bit that uh, was gifted to me, which is great. Right, so, so far, um, these have been done with a height adjustment. 
I've done the handles. I've got to do the bolts up now. A bit of grease in there just to help them move a bit. Um, the roller now spins. I've got to hook up the, um, the spring yet. So let me now just hook up these, these bolts here and that'll be the back axle in place. I can then turn it over and maybe try and hook up the height adjustment rod. So I'm just conscious to get it off the um, off the deck so that I can, uh, it saves the paintwork. And once that's done, I can then go back to the front axle and set the height adjustment. Okay, now we're back on the wheels again and now the height adjustment is now fully operational on the back only. So I wanna try and hook up this front one now. <coughs> which is going to go onto here with a little tiny circlip if I can find the circlip so let me just try and remove some of this wrapping I don't want to remove it all so I'll try and protect it from the body if I can it's got a big heavy duty spring fitted to it as well so if I can just remove some of it that should be plenty that will then protect it as well. So this little tiny arm will go into there. That's got a circlip to go on. Um, and once I can get that circlip on first, I can then take this cover off and um, put the spring on. <coughs> now the circlip is here, which I've found. It's going to be a bit of a pickle to fit, I know it is. It was a bit of a pickle to get out. So let me try and just get this on. So it is going to be a bit of a, a, bit of a pickle because access is very limited. But it's got to go on. I did bend it a bit when it came out. Let's have a little look at him. It's a bit bent. Let me uh, let's try and straighten him up a smidge. Oh, I dare say it's supposed to have a little bit of a bend in it anyway, just so it actually uh, locks on. I'm not looking forward to this. I can see me spending about an hour on here, which will be about a 30 seconds on the video for you guys. Oh, that's nearly there. Let me see what that looks like. Well, oh, that's actually got him, I think. Yeah, that's got him. So now, just got to bend these little arms round and that will grip. grip it. Now if I can't get it to go all the way around what I'll probably end up doing is put a little star clip on there. But that would be just as much fun. Trying to get that to sit. I can't believe it actually went on as easy as it, as it did but that could be a bad thing because it could mean it may want to come off. That shouldn't go too far. That's got him. Okay, that's good actually. No editing required there. So with that in place, I can now possibly, yeah, the height adjustment works on the front axle. I can now remove all of this. I remember I did one before, very similar to this. I need to turn it fire down in a minute. And um, I was trying to be as careful as I can, but I didn't wrap the arm up. And in the end, I end up dinking the paintwork. I had to go and do a patch up job, which I don't like doing. So my jobs are not, are not professional, but uh, I do try and do a good job if I can. I got another four mowers in last night, funnily enough. I was only supposed to buy three. The bloke turned up, and so I found another one as well. He said, oh, I've got another one. Um, do you want that as well? So much you want for it, so you can have it, he said. So I got uh, four mowers for 25 quid, which is good. Two mount fields, a hater, and uh, a crow cast. I 
like that and one comes off. So I'm happy with that now. And I've got to put the spring on. Now the spring's going to go. Pardon my tummy. I think it goes onto there like so. One of these ways and hooks onto there. So that's down and that's round. Yeah, so that's got to go onto there somehow, much more underneath. That's it. And then it's got to go around. This is why I don't want to damage the, the body, and maybe I should have done put this in first. That's going to go onto there. I might just try and be a bit fiddly and just try and straighten that up and I can bend it back in a bit. Watch it snap. Watch it snap. Then we'll be in trouble. Okay. Let me get a bit of pull cord. And I'll try and pull that back. Right, I've rigged up I've rigged up one of my pry bars, which also come off my old wish list. See if that'll aid us. A bit more. I've just got to be pushed down. Oh, look at that. I knew they'd come in handy, the old pry bars. So that's now in place. Just got to try and remove a bit of pull cord, but that won't be no biggie. I can cut that off or whatever. So, thank you very much, Chrissy Boy, for the old pry bar. That made that job a lot easier. Sometimes it's just about having the right tools. So that's now in place. I've got to bend that back. That's no big one. I'll try and get this spring off, or this rope off, there you go. Cool, well that's that done, I'm gonna test the uh, height control, which now goes all the way down, all the way up, which is good. Yeah, happy with that. All right, I'm gonna turn this heating off, I'll get a bit warm in here, and I'll come back. Right, and that's that little bracket just there tightened up. And all it does is literally, as you come down to the lowest setting, it won't allow it to go any lower than, than that mark just there. That's all it does. So that's cool. That all now works freely and exactly as, as it should do. So super happy with that. That's good. Okay, I've now just clipped on the uh, front bit. Um, just, just a little plastic cover and just clips over the front of the, um, the deck like that. So that's all now done. Front axle is all now done. Super good. What bits we've got left? We've got this big shoulder bolt to go on. And we've got some engine bolts. So that'll be for like, for fitting the engine. And I've got these two chappies here, which at the moment, I've no idea where they go. But I will figure it. At the minute, no idea. Um, I might have to look through the video and watch that to see where, see where bats they actually come from. But at the moment, I'm not seeing no obvious signs. There's two big holes just there, which might have something to do with it. Just there, let me see if they fit in there. Which they do, so that would be, I think they just actually, just actually hold that on. I shan't put them on top and get the handles. I think the handles stop here, and there might be a cover for that, so that might be there for. So. No worries. Um, let's now try and attach some of these fenders. I've got to take these little screws out. They don't belong in there. Um, so we'll try and attach the... I think the black fender's gone first, followed by the reds, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so this big shoulder bolt, or I thought it was a shoulder bolt, it's actually not. Um, so it's got a collar on it. That goes in there, and that stops the um, back roller coming back any further. So very gently, I'm going to tip this deck on its side. I'll try and get you guys to see as much of this as I can. That goes in there. Now I had problems with this. It did not want to go on. So I might go a bit careful. Uh, that goes onto there. Remember right, I had to impact this off and it really did give me a bit of arm ache. I might have to just redo the threads on this very quickly before I bolt it on. Put it in the vise and just try and run the threads down a bit better. Because I seem to remember it darn near shaking my hand off. Because the threads are not very clean. Let me clean them threads up. And I'll come back when I fit it. Right, that's a bit of a clean up. And I'm a, I'm a lot happier now. It's certainly, I, I, can't, I remember it being an absolute pickle. 
Now, does that go on the rear like that? And that go on the rear like that? I think it did. I think it did. I don't think it's a necessity either way, and I've just got a washer on the inside to support it. I don't think it's a nylon, a nylon washer either, actually. Let me just double check. No, it's not. Right, that goes on there, and then I can try and get an impact and a 13. up inside there or in there that could be good about there I'm gonna try and run that in happy with that um, so now the height adjustment when activated that will now stop at number one which should be on that shoulder bolt just there so that's where that goes so much happier got to change the battery and then we get on with some of the um, fairing right next we want to this bottom part of the fairing which I think is about 10 mil so I've got a 10 mil socket out in a minute that goes in there. Where's my socket set? This is what I could do with a, a tool, tool trolley to keep all my stuff on the bench. I know exactly where it is. Uh, 10 mil with an extension. Okay, let's bring you back into there. I think it's a 10 mil. Yeah. And these go onto these two bolts, one here and one here. And they're captive, so they should. One sits in there. And the other one goes in there, and it lines up. There should be another little bolt for it somewhere. It should be out there. Give them a quick clean as well. I don't need spray them, it's got grass on them. Not too tight because it is only plastic. I give it a quick spray with WD-40. That's on. I give it a clean and I've got one on the other side to do as well. As you can see, just with a quick blast of WD-40 spray brings it up. And it's got another cover to go over top of that yet as well. So and that's been sprayed up fully, so that'd be good. Right, I'll turn it around and do the other side. Right, just take the screw out of there, which is what goes into here. Have that number plate ran, I'll be the numbers height adjustment ran the wrong way as well. So now I've got two little tiny prongs here to go on the inside. They should push into place first. Get a right angle, like so. And then I've got that little tiny screw that goes all the way down into there. Try and figure that out. It's going to be no easy thing. It goes. And then somehow it's going to find its way. There it goes. Into there. And I've got one on the other side to do as well. It's only one screw holds it on, so I don't go too mad. It is only plastic. And then that will now worked as exactly as it should do. I'll spin it round, do the other side, and uh, back in two ticks. So that screw comes out. And pick up the fairing. And again, these two hooks, they go in here. Some of that. I 
That's it. Hold that fairing on in place there. Oh, Riley boy was pleased last night. Yeah, old Santa Claus come to see him. Oh, he was so pleased. A little lad, he had a smile on his face, about three and a half miles long. Just wanted to get this. Uh, there's a spring around the back here that holds a flap on. It's not quite where it should be. It should be in there. The other side is all okay, so that flap now works as it should do. It's not catching, which is good. Yeah, Riley boy, he was oh, he was so pleased, so pleased. And did you know? Not that I'm not that I'm normally worried, not that I'm normally concerned, but did you know? Riley boy's little live stream the other night when Santa came to see him, someone gave him a thumbs down. Can you believe that? Can you Adam and Eve it? I don't mind people giving me the thumbs down, but I don't see any sense behind that. Anyway, it is what it is. They're entitled to their opinion as much as I'm entitled to mine, I suppose. That's what it is. Right, next thing to do is put in these two big chunky, chunky wonkies, which are these big ones. I'm running out of washers, so that's about right. So, uh, that will go into there. It'll have a washer behind it to hold it. Access is a bit limited. And have a nut on there. And they're just like Allen bolts, I think. Uh, Allen, Allen heads. Get a bigger washer for it, the other side. That go into there. I've got to do those two up. They were pickles from what I remember. So I'll get those two done now and I'll come back to you. And then, do you know what? I might fit the engine on and we'll go from there. And there it is with a lump on. So this has all been sprayed. We'll get a new pull cord handle for it because that was knackered. I've got some spares here somewhere. I can just throw one on. That might be a problem. I don't think I'm getting no fuel leakage at the moment. Um, so next thing to do is new pull cord handle, just a handle only that's all, and then I'll put the, the main handles back on it. Uh, I've got the wheel covers to put back on the front as well, and I think we're nearly there, all by putting the dead man's handle back on, all that sort of good stuff. So wheel covers on first, then the pull cord handle, just want to thread one of those on there, not a problem, and then we're going to put the handles on. Okay, they're now tightened up. And I now trying to hook up the dead man's cable, which is in good condition and doesn't need any repairs. I'll hook that up. Uh, I might bring it up that way actually, maybe. What sort of angle is that going to sit at? No, that'd be okay. Hook it up onto there. Just pull that back into the slot. And that's that done. And then the dead man should now operate fully. And also cable tie just to hold it down out the way yeah be up there be fine um, I put a cable tie on that very quickly just to hold it keep it tidy and then um, release the fuel I'm gonna put some oil in it and then we'll take it outside and we'll give it a run but I won't start it until you guys are with me okay there it is finished just got to do the grass box Just got to repair the grass box on it. The other grass box doesn't fit it, so that's just a little project for me doing my own time. I might do a little video on it, but uh, I think you can agree. It, uh, it looks quite nice now. Better than what it did. It had that big rust mark on this side here, which is now gone. I think, if, I think you'll agree, it looks a bit better, so that's cool. Let's try and give it a run up. I have um, also sharpened the blade as well. I forgot to put it on. Yeah, it's priming.
done and done. Okay, so that's a Mountfield S412R SP um, now done. That's got the 150RS engine on top. I'm quite a big fan of the RS100 engine, um, engines because they're not, they're not commercial. Okay, but they are only a hobby, hobby mower. But they are really easy to work on and they are good reliable little engines. Um, that fired up first, first or second pour, I think it was. A bit of smoke because it has been tipped up, obviously. Um, it's been sat for three weeks. So a bit of smoke, um, but it's cleared within seconds, that's good. It's got to have a new spark plug, it's got to have air filter. <coughs> um, what else has got to have? Blade's been done. Um, and that's it, all changes have been done, of course, as well. New pull cord, it's had a complete spray job. Um, rust treated, amorited, primed, undercoated, lacquered, top coat, you know, you name it, it's had it done. So. Got to repair the grass box, that'd be another little video. It'd just be on the bench here with some rivets, nothing exciting. I'll record it, see what the video comes out, see what it looks like, and uh, if it comes out okay, I'll, I'll let it go, but uh, if not, I'll just delete it. But we'll see how we get on. Let me know if you want to see me repair it, that'd be easiest. Um, so that's that, and in some ways, I'm sort of glad it's now off the bench, because um, although it's good doing these sort, of, these sort of jobs, I'm not like other YouTube channels who, who've got all the equipment and can, can knock that out inside two or three days. It, it takes me a little while because I've got to do, do it with um, uh, rattle cans and what have you. And plus I've got a full-time job as well, so it takes a little bit of time for me to do that. But it is nice to get it off the bench, um, and now I can get something else in. Um, I'll just take you down to the uh, top of the garden and uh, show you what I had come in last night. Um, not a bad little haul, uh, four mowers. Um, before we wrap the video up. Right, it's a touch windy, so it's got to be quite quick. Uh, got a crow cast come in with a 450 flathead Briggs on it. Um, push mower. Looks to be all complete, actually. Not sure why it's come in, but uh, we'll get to that. This one here, uh, HP 470, hand propelled. Bit of oil coming out. Looks like it's been tipped up. Um, again, all looks to be complete. This one here, again, oil hanging out the side of it. This is the um, self-propelled version, pull cords there, uh, looks to be complete, so these can be quite easy fixes I'm hoping. And this is the one I wanted, um, which is a Hater uh, Moffit 48. Only problem is this one doesn't come with a bag. So if anyone's got a bag for one of these, I'm happy to pay for it. Um, if you can just uh, let me know, or if, you can, if someone can find me a cheap second hand one, that'd be even better. Uh, what age is this? This is a 2004 model, so that's got a Honda on it as well. So, super happy with that. That should turn a pretty little penny when it comes in, and they're all in really good nick, um, which I'm happy about. Okay, so that's what's just come in. Just had a quick little look at the hater, just a visual, and like I can see the fuel line has been cut on it, and the drive belt is, is half hanging off, and when you pull it, um, it makes a bit of a rattling noise, so it may be no good. But anyway, if someone has got a box for that, give me a shout. Um, it's a 48 version, not the 41. And uh, let me know, and I'll, uh, I'll do a deal with you, no problem. So, quick sip of the old, the old coffee. Yummy. So, that's Fat Mountfield done. So, thank you very much for watching this episode of Mixed Mowers. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it informative. If you did, don't forget to uh, leave a comment down below, positive or negative, don't really mind. Also hit the thumbs up or thumbs down, the choice is up to you. And also if this is your first time you're watching Mixed Mars, don't forget to hit the old subscribe button and give the old bell a nice good whack. That way it'll let you know when I've released another video. But until next time people, don't forget, take it easy.